Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video tutorial. This will be the second installment of the Central Canon versus Turtleback Canons uh, opening system. Uh, the Turtleback Canons is an unorthodox, unorthodox opening uh, that is still sometimes seen in competition. Uh, although it is unorthodox, it does have its merits and it can be a very agile counter. Now, uh, this book, this board is based on uh, Deceptions and Countermeasures that was written by Master Yong Wenqing and Grandmaster Zhang Qiang. Uh, I'm honored to have obtained permission from them to do these spots and share with you the intricacies of the Xiangqi opening. In the previous spot, um, Turtle Back Cannons, there were five, there were six major variations whereby Red could attack. In the previous spot, P5 plus 1, P3 plus 1, and P7 plus 1 were analyzed. Uh, in this spot, we will analyze C8 plus 2 and H8 plus 9. The sixth variation will be left to uh, the third installment of the video in the series. So without further ado, let us go to variation D. Now as, uh, as can be seen from the previous video tutorial, the total back cannons is quite versatile. In this bot, Red would attempt to play C8 plus 2, threatening to capture the chariot with C8 equals to 1. Now, there are many ways for black to deal with this situation. The first would be to play uh, C8 equals to 1. So, this is a very agile formation. And again, black would try to concentrate material to attack this flank. Now, uh, it would not be a good idea to play C8 equals to 3 now because Red had not moved and his formation could still be very versatile. So for example, if C8 equals to 3 were played, Red would develop his left horse as, in, uh, as a proper horse. Red would consolidate his defense. Red would threaten the chariot as an intermediate move and then develop his left, uh, develop his left chariot. Now, this would <coughs> Black would try to counter by protecting with uh, R4 plus 1 and Red can now attack the horse since the chariot at this position would have broken or would have uh, resulted in the black cannon not protecting the horse. Now if R1 equals to 2 was played this would be even worse because Red could play C1 equals to 9 and capture the red chariot for the win. So either way, C8 equals to 3 will not seem to be a very viable option now since Red had played the uh, Riverbank Cannon variation which is very very versatile. So that is why usually Black could play C1 equals to 2 as he would have to move the horse. And Red would attempt to attack the uh, horse as part of his plans. Uh, in this situation, he would try to aim for a rapid attack, try to harass the black pieces to gain some momentum in attack. H8 plus 7, would it be a good viable uh, option? Let us see. Attacking the chariot. But in this situation, <coughs> black would not move to R9 equals to 4 and play R9 equals to 6 instead so that he could make room for development of this uh, horse. And black could continue with C1 equals to 2, etc. etc. And he would still have a very uh, stable formation. Red would not have gained anything for his efforts in the past few moves. So that is why H8 equals to 7 is not a good idea and instead red would try to arrest black, the black pieces. So usually Black would consolidate his defense and Red would try to gain material rapidly with this move. Black would protect the horse. Red would take the opportunity to develop his horse and his chariot. Uh, Black would try to dislodge the cannon, forcing a trade of material. Now, uh, at this point in time, Black could have resolved Red's attack. The Red Cannon had played one move, two moves, three moves, only to be traded away by a can Black Cannon that had only moved one move. 
So Black has also consolidated his formation. Uh, there are many uh, viable options at this point in time. So Black has be said to be have, have done quite well. Let's say we continue with an attack from the central file and delivering a check. He would need to consolidate his defense or else the cannon would Black would push the pawn across the river to try to capture the horse. But in doing so, Black would now start to counter-attack uh, by moving his horse over here and dislodging the red cannon. And as can be seen, uh, Black has a very stable formation and both his chariots were now out. And he can handle Red's aggressions. Although Red had developed both horses as um, proper horses, further development of the horses would be an issue. So Black has a very stable defense and this would be quite uh, acceptable and black can be satisfied with this outcome so in variation d c8 plus 2 would not be such a good idea after all now the next variation that was discussed was h8 plus 9 whereby red would adopt a more subtle but um, very intense variation now according to the authors this move uh, is perhaps the most commonly seen move in actual play. Now, by developing the left horse as an edge horse, we will keep his options open. And he will also consolidate his uh, left flank in preparation for attacks, for possible attacks by the black cannon targeting his flank. Now, usually, black will continue with e3 plus 5. Now, this is also to decongest his right flank, allow for development and more options as the game goes. Now, um, now it would be an important idea for Black to consolidate his defense at this point in time. Uh, it would not be a good idea for him to try to jump the gun and attack uh, with C equals to 1. Now, the post given the book are, Black would go for, Red would go for the 5-7 cannons targeting the elephant and black will still have to move the elephant. And red will now take the opportunity to develop his left chariot. And red, black will protect the cannon with an elephant eye horse. Then red will develop the chariot to the riverbank. R1 equals to 2 and P3 plus 1. As can be seen, uh, black would have a very nice formation uh, going on. Uh, there will be input development for his pieces. And black, um, uh, Black's position was still a bit awkward. There would be not many good positions for this chariot to move. R9 equals to 6 would be perhaps his best option. And the issue of this cannon will still be, need to be resolved. So Red will have the initiative, initiative friendly in hand. Now, after consolidating the defense, there are three main uh, three sub variations that were discussed in the book. The first sub variation would be to play R2 plus 4, whereby Red would develop his right chariot. The second would be to develop the left chariot as a rank chariot. And last but not least, C8 equals to 7 for the 5 7 cannons. Okay? Now, amongst these three variations, C8 equals to 7 would, uh, let us see, since the cannon moved away, black would immediately place C8 equals to 2 to prevent the chariot from developing. I will attack. And <clears throat> at this point in time, uh, this will not be favorable for red because uh, the red horses would need much more effort for further development. Well, black would have basically a stable formation already in place. So C8 equals to 7 is not an option. Now, the more commonly played option would be C2 plus 4 or R9 plus 1. Now, in variation EA, or the first sub variation of variation E, R2 plus 4 was discussed. Black would play R1 plus 1 to deny red the option uh, the opportunity to play p9 equals to 1 to develop his left is at chores. Uh, we will continue with r2 equals to 6. Now, this is a targeted move. Uh, this is a move targeting 
Black's right flank, hoping Red would hope to use his chariot to pin or add pressure on Black's right flank. Now, in the book, uh, there was an interesting variation whereby uh, it was this capturing the horse was discussed. If, uh, although this is normally not advised, uh, the authors decided to show this variation, and which is quite interesting. So Black would capture the cannon, and Black would offer a pin, preparing to gain back uh, lost, preparing to gain material with say for, for example C8. C5 equals to etc. Black would play C8 equals to 1. And at this point in time, in this very interesting situation, Black would choose to protect his pieces in this manner. Now, this is very awkward, but uh, very interesting. Let's say Red tried to gain material with this, uh, with this skewer. Red Black could counter in this manner, threatening to trade chariots. And he would be safe. Red's attack would be foiled, and Black would actually gain material in this situation, whereby Black could now capture the horse, gain material, etc. etc. So this is quite an interesting variation. Now, uh, if R2 equals to 6 were played, Black would try to develop his right, left horse, uh, five six cannons, to prevent the black horse from playing h two plus four. And black would offer to trade material, insisting on developing his uh, right flank. Now this is a quite a powerful move as black tries to uh, lead the game into a state of confrontation, so that uh, there will be chances for him to. Ex Increase his initiative. Now Black would try to refuse, uh, would not of, would not want to trade material, and instead uh, apply pressure with Anna in cost eight. Black would protect the cannon in this manner, and, be, and another option would be to play C for cost two. So at this point in time, uh, Red avoids trading material as he wants to keep the situation complicated to his favor. Now, what would happen if Red accepted the trade? After the trade, uh, it will be an even situation whereby neither color uh, can make uh, significant advances at once. So, if Red traded material, the cows will capture it, and later on the cannon could play for, go for the pale corner cannon to trap the chariot. So this is quite an even situation. And R6 equals to 4, we split by red to prevent a trade of material. Now at this point in time, black would continue with R4 equals to 2 to try to dislodge the red chariot or de delay its de uh, development. This is an aggressive attempt to fight for the initiative. What would happen if uh, Black decided to play R2 equals to uh, C2 equals to 4 to insist on a trade of material. Capture the cannon. And Red would now apply a pin with this very powerful move. This chariot would now pin the black horse and cannon on Black's throat rank. Red Black would try to dislodge or free himself the pin with this move, but with the red chariot would simply refuse to budge, and as the, at this point in time, the black's pieces would be uh, limited in their effectiveness, and red would have a significant upper hand because his pieces do not have any good places for further development. So R4 equals to C4 equals to 2 is played for an aggressive counter by black. Now red tries to attempt to gain material with a pin. Trade of chariots and black would now retreat his cannon and try to gain material. What would happen if he captured the uh, cannon instead? Black would play R4 equals to 8 uh, instead of capturing the cannon and However, Black would use his cannon cleverly and 
protect the horse. The black can be satisfied with this situation because the red horse will still have trouble uh, for further development and the black's chariot and horse are free to do damage. So that is why it is not a good it is not a good uh, it is also a viable option to play h2 plus one sorry. Uh, in the back to the variation Y, uh, black would retreat the cannon to attack the red horse. And after trading material, uh, the situation on the board has been diffused, and uh, this would be a rather even situation which black can be very happy about. So this would be variation EA. Variation E is a ship plus nine, and red will develop this chariot uh, as a riverbank chariot in variation EA. In variation EB, in the last sub variation. Uh, black red would develop his left chariot as a ranked chariot. Um, black would counter nicely with this, with offering a trade of material. Uh, now this would appear to be awkward, but it would be the best move in this situation. Now it would not be a good idea to play CD equals to three, thinking that maybe he could attack the elephant over here since the chariot had moved away. However. Red could continue with R9 equals to 6 and go for the, the very powerful pin or threat with R6 plus 6. Black's uh, formation would <coughs> become very unstable immediately and Red would have many options to continue his attack and uh, Red can be very happy with this position. CD equals to 2 to offer cannons trade material and black, uh, red will try to gain some compensation by developing his chair in this manner uh, black, uh, sorry. black would link his chariots and red would take the opportunity to develop his horse it would not be a good idea to play h2 plus 6 at this point Red will try to attack from the central file, offering a trade of chariots. And Black will be able to protect the central pawn in the nick of time. Now, Red's attack would be a little bit forced or strained because there was only one horse on the central file for attack. Now, usually the horses need to be more, if, for the horses to be a threat, they need to be linked together whereby they could slowly develop. Uh, runs their way forward. So this an attack with only one horse in the central foul is bound, uh, cannot do much and would usually lead to failure. So black would be able to def uh, deal with this situation very easily. That is why p3 plus 1 is played. And black would offer a trade of material. Red would accept. Again, attacking, targeting the horse. Now, uh, at this point in time, it is imperative for Black to defend in this manner. Now, uh, Black would try to start a counter attack. It would not be a good idea to play passively with R2 equals to 3 because uh, once, if Red were allowed to, Red were allowed to capture the pawn, uh, this chariot will now indirectly pin the cannon and horse it to the over here and black will feel more pressure. With R2 equals to 6, black would be able to target this mobile horse very uh, as need be. So, capture the pawn, black would try to harass the horse, forcing red to both uh, c5 equals to, to 6 and perhaps e3 plus 5 later on for defense. Now the situation of bot has become much calmer. Uh, red would not have gained much for his efforts and although he has a slight advantage, black can be very satisfied with this situation. So that is why um, this h8 plus 9 variation would seem to be okay for black. 
Now, uh, a short recap. In these five variations, uh, P5 plus 1, P3 plus 1, in the first two, red would be able to gain a uh, sorry, black would be able to hold its own and gain a significant, uh, and even gain some advantage in the process. In version three and four, for example, uh, black would be able, to, although red might still be attacking or have a slight initiative, uh, black has a very stable defense that can deal with red's aggressions. So in the last variation, H G plus nine, which is quite often seen, I've played it. Uh, many times as we read, uh, this will lead to a very slow, very slow pace of on the board, but it will also be a very steadfast approach. And if played correctly, in very, there are two variations: variation uh, E A and E B. If played correctly, that will be able to achieve a satisfactory position uh, that would make the turtle back cannons seem to be a viable counter. However, in the book, it was recommended that for this move, uh, it was best that Red play H8 plus 7 to develop his left horse as a proper horse. Now, the variations in that bot is very complicated and can only be presented in maybe one or two videos on its own. So for the time being, uh, in these first two lessons, these five variations have been discussed and so far so good uh, Black would be able to hold his own with satisfactory uh, position. So uh, I've played the turtle, cannons, turtle back cannons as red and black and it's quite an interesting uh, counter but again there are very, a lot of traps and uh, tactical combinations that one will have to be aware of for both colors. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video. If you like the work that I've been doing, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up for this video. Thank you and have a nice week ahead.